Um, yeah, but so what, what about the Taste 600 connection? Because I seen that you had songs with him, and I was just trying to figure out like where that came from or like how that came about because that's a legendary Chicago figure. It's like, um, like we know a lot of people mutually. Like his sister went to I went to high school with his younger sister, and then his little cousin he from off my block. So you feel me? We was connected through that way, and really, Taste 600 was the first rapper from Chicago to ever shout me out. Like, he was playing me on this Instagram, and then he made a, uh, another post, like, Polo G and put the fire emojis. And then I just hit up his sister, like, tell um, your brother, you feel me? Uh, good looking for shouting me out and that thing. Then he followed me on the gram, and then we just started, you feel me? Talking back and forth. So do you feel that Chicago, at this point, if you're an up-and-coming rapper out of Chicago, you feel like people actually like support you or that people tend to just hate and not want to see somebody else come out because it is so competitive and there's so many people trying to rap it's a it varies it's like when you cold and you coming out the city they gonna support you 110 percent. but it's like you gonna hire your haters of course that's where that's where anywhere but it's like definitely in the city because that's just the dynamic of it like a lot of people be hating yeah, because, like, you even just describing somebody who didn't know you shouting out your music, you know, that's that's kind of rare, like, for somebody to be, like, smaller and not getting crazy views and to have somebody who's more established, been around longer, just start shouting them out out of the goodness of their heart. You know, that shit doesn't happen all the time, and it actually, like, means a lot to a lot of up-and-coming artists. But, mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of, like, smaller rap scenes and shit, it's, like, it's, it's, it's hard to find somebody that wants to fuck with somebody unless they have, like, a reason to or unless there's, like, money to be made and shit. I feel that. like I'm real big on showing love though. Like I never been a type to try to hide that I rock with somebody music. Like if it's nice, it's nice. I feel like a lot of people don't be wanting to show love or shout a person out because they feel like it's gonna stop what they got going on or get in the way of it. But it's like what's going on for you is what's destined for you. Exactly. Yeah, and it's crazy too because after a while you start to realize that the really big people in the music industry and stuff are paying attention to everything that people who are smaller are doing just so they could like shamelessly rip them off and shit. Yeah. And there's been so many times like I remember when I was like working with X that it was like that was the conversation was like realizing like, oh, there's huge artists that want to work with him, but they're not going to work with him unless he signs to them. And that, right. you know, because that's like realistically it's like, why is blank gigantic number one rapper going to actually do songs with somebody unless they feel like they're getting something out of it to them? It's like it's not worth it unless they have like a, a, a benefit to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Shit. Um, where did the, the, the Capilot crew name come from? Uh. What you mean, Capilot Crew? Or is that your crew, Capilot, or is that just your nickname? That's just my nickname. Oh, okay. That's that just came like Capilot. It mean like not for none. Like in the, it's a, like a new sense or a definition that they gave the word. Like I believe, like towards Atlanta, like Cap mean like line. you front, you line. Yeah. But in Chicago, to be capping, it mean like you crazy, you a bug up, like. You 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 the person who gonna act crazy in the situation? Yeah. So is that weird for you that the the word is sort of taking on like a little bit different different definition? I mean, that's just what anything is would be like two definitions to a word or whatever the case may be. Right. No, I feel it. Um. So and, and then your other name that I seen is Mister Do Too Much. When when did that come into the picture? I gave myself that name like <laughs> back when I was when I first started out rapping. It's like. I don't know why I'd be doing too much a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I just threw that on out. Yeah. Um, getting that, that Capilot chain, though, was that, was that, like, the first time you spent that much money on, like, one thing like that? Definitely. Was that a huge decision, or was it just exciting? You finally feel like you actually, like, made it? That, one, that wasn't even the, um, the thing that made me feel like that. It was just the whole situation in general, like, after sign, and then it was, like, the attention that I was getting, I'm like, oh yeah, it's that time. But when I finally got my chain, that was just like a, that was big for me too, though. Like to just know I could do that, and it was like considering where I had just came from, like mm -hmm. I was just in locked up for petty cases, stuff like that. So it was, I was like, dang. Yeah, it's it, oh, that's kind of like a rapper thing. Like, did you go and get the chain like as soon as you got your advance, or did you like give it some time? Oh, I gave it some time. Okay. 
Kanye used to like brag about that. That that was kind of his thing. He went and got jewelry before he bought a house or any or anything. That's <laughs> that's Kanye being. Dude, that that's the ultimate question you got to ask anybody from Chicago these days. How you feel about Kanye? I mean, Kanye, Kanye, you going you got your people who hate him. You got your people who love him. Like he be doing him. You can't really fault him for doing him. Mm. Yeah, it's actually kind of amazing when you think about all the shit that he's done over the past year or two that. People really like give him a pass and they're just like, hey, like, yeah, he might get a lot of shit for saying crazy shit, but he doesn't get anywhere near as much shit as another person might. That's because he can't eat. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> like if there was a new up and coming rapper that said the kind of stuff about Trump or slavery that he said, you'd probably never hear from him again. But yeah, kind, he, got, he can rock with it. A new rapper got to build up a legacy or something. <laughs> you got to go crazy. Facts. Um, so how did you link up with Lil TJ? Uh, it was a um, it was a A and R um over at my label. She linked us up, but TJ was rocking with my music beforehand. I was rocking with his. We linked up at the stool, and then it's like we've been rocking there since. You guys get along similarly because I feel like you guys sort of remind me of each other. You got like a Chicago and the New York version of each other in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, that's what I get. We I hear that a lot for yeah. some reason, but I don't know. We just be rocking with each other like. We cool, like he off, be feeding off each other back. For sure. Uh, is there anybody else, like, in particular that, like, what are you working on right now? You working on a certain project or, like, tape? You still just dropping single videos and shit? No, I'm, um, I got a tape dropping this March, Die Legend. It's on the way. Like, gonna be about, like, uh, 14 tracks. Trying to, like, show my diversity, you feel me? Like, just really trying to put my foot in the door, you feel me? Are you you got any plans to get people on that? No, no, it's gonna be all me. Really, no features. No. I'll but, say that for like one of my next projects or something. Right. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's pretty crazy for a person in your situation where you've done such crazy numbers on YouTube and shit, and it's like at a certain point, it's like, damn, you're doing way bigger numbers on certain songs than, like, a lot of, like, established artists. Like, but but what do you feel that like you have to prove at this point? Or what's your, your impression that you want to make on the game with this tape? That, that, like, my greatness. Like, I just want to show that, like, I'm different from a lot of other, like, I got a, more to offer than a lot of other, you feel me, artists when they come to this, and I got longevity. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of people could just be in this for the moment. Like, yeah, hey, I'm Ah, I can you feel me? Switch it up to whatever the rap game gonna be in the next year or so. You feel me? Right. So. No, nah, it's true. I mean, yeah, a lot of people can come out and like make a splash, have a song do well or whatever. But it's definitely that's that's really the the telltale thing. It's like who can be around for a few years and like actually be consistent with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. Do you in any way find the lifestyle out here or like being in Calabasas, do you find it kind of boring in comparison to being in Chicago where there's just always shit going on and it's like more people you know and stuff? Or do you like the fact that you get to like be more focused out here? I like the fact that I get to be more focused. Like I like the chill vibe. I like the, you feel me? Everybody out here nice as hell. Like mm. walk around, motherfucker, calm compliment you you barely know and shit like that. <laughs> It's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> and like in the city, they going to mug your ass to you. Out of their sight, it's like they crazy as hell in the city. So it's like you you appreciate this vibe way more. No, I mean it's smart too for you to like make the move early because I feel like in New York and Chicago, there's a lot of examples of like if you're going to become a popular rapper, why you probably do not want to stay there. Both because of not even because of the street shit, because you might be super super good in that regard, but just the cops will fucking laser in on you and just yeah. they don't want you doing good out there, especially if you're sort of talking about whatever in your songs. I mean that that's just you're setting yourself up to be under a lot of scrutiny if you stay around there. Yeah, yeah, like the um the police be knowing that thing that's going on. Like they be uh, especially on the rapper. So you know got you gotta know how to maneuver when you in a city and you and you got that status. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever uh or do you feel like are you concerned with keeping your social media and shit sort of clean in the sense of like you don't wanna be putting yourself out there? Like there's a lot of rappers I realize who are like in gangs but will never mention the gang that they're in on social media because of the cops i mean like when people know what's going on they know what's going on but it's like the other stuff like the guns and uh extra and uh drugs and uh, you wouldn't never catch me doing nothing like that or i really wouldn't mention a gang ain't no need to like Mm. i know what's up you feel me it's just like 
everything you're going to see with me really more so career related. So. Yeah. You're, so you wouldn't take a photo with a gun? No. That's no. Normal. Nah, I know people who drink lean every day and they'll never take a photo with some lean. Right, yeah. And then, and then I know people who every time that they ever get lean, they take a picture. It's on the Instagram story. They're pouring it. Like, fucking got to show it off. It's like, sometimes I want to tell people, like, you don't have to show off every dumbass thing that you're doing. Okay, hopefully you guys enjoyed this throwback clip. If you did, show some support. Like, comment, subscribe, and head on over to NoJumper.com if you want to support. Or go on over to Snapchat and just search No Jumper. There's a link in the description. We've had our news show dropping a couple times per week, and I swear you're going to love it. Balling like an athlete, but got No Jumper. Appreciate y'all.